Don't air your dirty laundry. Why do you got to talk about that? Can't we just keep it in the family? Can't it just be a secret? I don't understand why everybody has to know our business. If you've heard these words out of someone's mouth, you're talking to a narcissist or a narcissist enabler. Doesn't matter which one they are, you need to cut them out of your life immediately. This is Ollie Matthews, and this is a new segment I'm starting on my channel called Narcissist Mailbag. And I don't expect to be doing these very often because I get very few of these types of responses. But I got one today. Uh, sent privately to my YouTube and usually when I get them they are sent privately these hater types or enabler types and it really angered me today it didn't even angered my wife not so much even for me because I'm at a point now where I can see through it f for what it is I'm mad for everybody else who still deals with these people and can't see it for what it is because the intention is all the same. So what I'm going to do now is is read the email exchange I received from this person and and, and walk you through it and walk through how this person has exposed themselves for their agenda and exposed themselves to be a narcissist themselves. So we'll get right into it. This letter comes from screen name on YouTube MMMZMZ. Gibberish. It's your first red flag. Subject, hello there. You are an articulate man. You certainly have something to say and there is a public service in what you're doing, at least in some of your videos. Some of them are plainly awful, and for your sake, sake of your family, and for most important, the sake of your daughter, you should remove them. As I understand, your daughter is or about to be a teenager. You can imagine how she feels about her father exposing family dirty laundry on YouTube so that he capitalized can feel better about himself in his life. Talk about shame and embarrassment in front of all her friends. She will hateful. She will hate you, rightfully. In parentheses, for the rest of her life. That's the first paragraph. So you start off with a compliment that some of the things I'm doing are okay but you immediately tip your hand with airing dirty laundry and I'm going to expose my daughter and how you're looking out for me see you know again this person just can't come out and say hey I have a problem with what you said you gotta come out they have to come out with oh I'm just really trying to I'm only trying to help you that Dirty laundry line is such a red flag. Because whose dirty laundry have I aired on, on this channel? My dirty laundry about my story. And somehow she's going to be, my daughter is going to be embarrassed because bad things happen to her dad that I'm trying to help people about. I don't think so. And she will rightfully hate me for the rest of my of the rest of her life. This is somebody trying 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 to help, mind you. Moving on. That phone call with your mother doesn't show anything but a screwed up relationship. After yours, hopefully, you look much worse than she does. Much worse. What this person is referring to is when on the phone call is when my mother said she will be dead soon I said hopefully see what the narcissist likes to do is they like to hang their hat on one little thing you said that 
they think is so abhorrent so that and so horrible that you have no valid you have no valid argument otherwise. And what they're also trying to do is they're trying to take away that validation that I had and that every person that's listened to my video and watched that video gets by watching it. Trying to completely invalidate what went on in that phone call, how that phone call relates to the thousands and thousands of people who have listened to it. Story after story after story. You just read the comments yourself. How this can be my mother, this could be my father, my God, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. What this person tries to do and what these people try to do, these dirty laundry people try to do, is to shut you up and to make you think that you're in the wrong, your story has no validity, well, you said this and you said that, so that makes everything that's gone on absolutely horrible. Now, if she wants to hang her hat on a hopefully, well, my mother's been saying she's going to be dead for, 30, for the last 30 years, that that's the worst thing that they ever heard. Well, then you can have at it. Because I'm much further along in my recovery than to let some two-bit hack hiding behind a jumbled up screen name on YouTube try to throw me off in a private message. My anger is not, as I said, so much for me. It really isn't. Because, you know, I know what that call is. And I talk to a lot of you you know, whether it be on Skype, email, Facebook. And everybody I talk to has the same story of being second-guessed and gaslighted by these people. And these people always come to you as I'm trying to help you out. Anybody who tries to silence you from telling the truth you need to get rid of them immediately, they are a cancer and they need to go moving on your relationship with your daughter or lack of it is just an excuse no one can stop you from keeping a contact with her not a court not your ex not an army you are her father it is your responsibility to maintain contact not hers what are you waiting for how hard is it to send a weekly email phone call message a letter a card or flowers for her birthday good grades etc send them to school or a home address if not safe have you showed any interest in her grades have you talked to her teachers your daughter and her education is is not their responsibility it's yours give call to teachers show that you care otherwise your waiting and caring are just empty words. Let me tell you why that paragraph is so fucked up. Is so fucked up. Because it assumes I haven't done any of those things. When the reality is I've done it repeatedly over and over and over again. But this person would rather make blind assumptions about who they think I am and what I've done in relationship to my daughter. See, if this person really was concerned with the relationship of my daughter and concerned with my well-being, and the same with you people, the people who come to you under the same guise that they're trying to help you, this person would have asked, hey, have you tried this? Have you ever tried? No, that's not what this person did. Didn't ask the question, well, how did it get? This person is making blind assumptions based on a couple minute YouTube videos that they've seen. Instead of asking follow-up questions, they'll make accusatory assumptions like I've just walked away and I haven't called up there. 1,954 
times in a year. This past year alone, emails, voicemails deleted, flowers, presents. I'm not saying this to justify myself. I'm saying this to prove, to show the point that this person didn't even ask if this has been going on. This person is just making blind assumptions because they have an agenda and they want me to shut up. Why do they want me to shut up? And why does everybody want you to shut up when you start airing dirty laundry? Because you're holding that mirror right up to their narcissistic face and they don't want to deal with what they're seeing. I will continue to do this because I know it helps others. I know the validation other people hear, the other people and other people get by hearing my story. It helps. It gives them validation that they're not a piece of shit, that they're valid, that, that, that their feelings are real, that their experiences are real. And these narcissist motherfuckers can't stand to look themselves in the mirror. They just want you to shut up. And you can't shut up. You have to hold the mirror right to their narcissist face. And stop berating her mother. By insulting her mother, you are insulting her as well. Can you imagine the hurt that you do to her? Her mother is her world, her safety, her role model. Are you public and you are publicly trashing that woman? A woman who you once married, but by your own admission were never in love with. Isn't that ugly? You cry in your video how you betrayed yourself and you didn't mention it. It didn't even cross your mind that you betrayed, shamelessly lied to another human being as well. I am sending you two links that I may, that I, you may find helpful. By the way, this person can't write for anything. I'm personally not religious other than that. The guy knows what he's talking about. And she sent me two evangelical preacher 700 types. Whenever somebody tells you they're not religious and they start sending you evangelical stuff, it's a they're hiding behind religion and they say, oh, well, we're not really religious. Yeah, because you know what the, the gist of the videos are? Turn the other cheek, the toxicity will kill you. And why do they do that? Because they want you to get on their program and buy something from you and give you their money, and it's a money. These people are abhorrent. Now, as far as her point about my ex-wife goes, yeah, I've already said, yeah, I had a girlfriend. But you don't know what the divorce process was. You don't know what I've said to my ex-wife or what apologies I've made or what or or what conversations have been had or however amicable it's tried to have been. So you've tipped your hand that you have an agenda here. Okay? It didn't matter that the marriage was gone for six years before before I moved out, that it was living in a van for a year. Before I even before I before I officially filed. Doesn't matter. They didn't ask. They didn't ask what the exact circumstances were. They went off a rant video that I made after Father's Day. And I stand by everything I said in that video. Everything, even though it was done in anger, okay, at the spur of the moment, okay, because I think it's important that people know I'm human too, and I have my manic moments, okay? And it's still real what went on there. I feel, you know, and I do feel bad about, you know, the circumstances at the end of that marriage to a certain extent. But it was unavoidable. And I'm not saying that to defend myself. I'm saying that because you're hearing these same things from these people and thinking you need to defend yourself to them. You don't. You don't. You're a victim and you've been abused.
That doesn't mean you're living in a shadow of it, you know, in a shroud of victimhood, living under your couch, afraid to go out. Okay? But don't let anybody try to invalidate your feelings. You see, this person is tipped a lot here. Okay? They obviously have a problem that I got a divorce. Uh, you know, this, you know, the wording is, and, you know, I'm not even that sure that this might not be somebody who actually knows me from my family. Uh, you know, I think it's a small possibility, but it is a possibility because there's lines in there that have been said to me verbatim, verbatim. So either this person works in the family court system or has been in, involved in the family court system or this person knows me. Either way, they have an agenda, and their agenda is to try to get me to shut up. See, I'm going to embarrass my daughter with my recovery and what has happened to me. Why would me getting abused be an embarrassment to my daughter? Okay? See, they want, see, they want you to shut up. But they're not going to tell the narcissist, see, this person who's trying to help you want you to shut up, but they don't tell the narcissist to stop. They don't tell the abusers to stop. They can go on and on and on and continue to bad mouth, be abusers. As much. The only person that has to be quiet about it is you. And if you talk about it, now, every, now you're the one who's going to be doing damage? I don't think so. So, I replied back in the way only I can, I guess. Thank you. You and people like you are the reason I make my videos. You're actually worse than you are actually worse than the abuser because you give them cover and try to silence the victim. This is because you are an abuser yourself, and I may may as well be talking about you in, in my videos. And you hide behind religion as most narcissistic abusers do. Don't worry, and I told them. I'm going to go into depth and make a video tonight because I think it's important to shine a light on people like you who try to silence victims, and it's important for my followers to see that. And I did, oh, and one other thing. When you say dirty laundry, you might as well be wearing a sign that says, I'm an abuser. Well, this person then emailed back, and this is the last one because I wasn't going to go back and forth. Your threats are funny. You will make a video about my email. Unfortunately, you will portray yourself just as an angry man who keeps himself in perpetual victimhood, wasting everybody's time. Now, if I thought I was wasting everybody's time, I, I, I don't think I'd have as many followers as I do, and it's not like I have that many followers, but I certainly would be doing what I'm doing. And I certainly don't think my followers think I'm wasting my time or wasting their time. See again, this person just wants to th make me wants to make you second guess yourself that everybody's going to look down on you. This is the narcissist's greatest tool is what everybody is, what the perception of you is going to be in everybody else's eyes. But if you ever notice they only say this stuff to you privately. They don't say it in a group. Why is that? I'll get into that. If I wanted to humiliate or embarrass you, I would post a comment. I would not send you a private email. So your idea that I abused you in any way is nonsense. Now I ne now that is really telling. Because I never said you tried to abuse me. I called you an abuser. I said you had an agenda. You say use the words humiliate and embarrass. It's two of the narcissist's favorite things to do. I never accused you of trying to humiliate or embarrass anyone. But it's funny you go right there. Hmm. Another narcissist projection. See, the narcissist will tell you exactly what they're doing. They'll tell you what they're thinking. You want to know what a narcissist Listen to them. They'll tell you what they're really about. You want to know what a narcissist is about? 
Just sit back and wait wait for what they accuse you of. Just wait and wait for just listen to what the narcissist accuses you of doing, and then you will know exactly what the narcissist is about. It's part of this woman's tip in her hand here. I'm not hiding behind religion. I wrote, if you read carefully, that I'm not religious, but a guy whose link I sent you is. Regardless of his evangelism, he gave an extraordinary analysis of the problem you are going through. It may serve you as an excellent platform on which you can build on. With or without God, the second video is equally good, and it offers practical solution for empowerment. With or without God, it's as equally as good. And and you're telling me you're not some kind of religious zealot hiding behind some kind of faux sense of helping me bullshit because all these videos and these videos are nonsense. They're Christian right wing, turn the other cheek, nonsensical bullshit. Bullshit. That's exactly what the narcissist always wants you to do, to turn the other cheek. You know what? You can't turn the other cheek with a narcissist because the only way to deal with a narcissist is to cut it out and expose them. If you had cancer, you wouldn't say, well, let's ignore it and hope it goes away. Don't talk about it. Don't air it out. Hopefully it goes away. No, you expose it, you cut it out, and you get the frig rid of it, period. These people are cancers, and they need to be exposed and cut out. I do understand your struggle as to why you're shooting everyone on the horizon who dare not cry with or for you. But tears or munitions on or offline will just help you sink fast, faster. Medicine is never pleasant, but it may work if you have the guts to take it. Oh, well, she's saying I have no guts, so I guess I might better run out and go join a religious cult. Listen, if anybody's, if anybody's looking not to get embarrassed, it's people like this. Because if you, if you really were, you wouldn't be hiding behind some incoherent screen name, MMMZMZ, sending private comments to a, to a YouTube email that nobody else could see. No, you're sending private comments because you don't want to face the wrath of your own, of your own comments publicly. I invited him. I sent her an email back and I said those things right to them. And that person is free to comment all they want. But they don't want to do that. They don't want to say publicly what this shit. You know why? Because 98% of what they're going to get is you're acting like an asshole and you're the narcissist and they know it. They want to hide behind the guy. I'm helping you. I'm, I'm trying not to embarrass you. Really? Really, you're trying not to embarrass me with some fake screen name. I'm the one putting my name out there, my picture out there, my Facebook out there. What do I have to be embarrassed about at this point in the game? What do, what do you think is going to be said that's going to embarrass, embarrass me? What could possibly be said about you that's going to embarrass you at this point? Nothing. These people are worried about the embarrassment, not you. And they want to make you second guess yourself, your feelings, what's going on in your life. Okay, just to make you shut up. Now, a message to all you narcissists. You don't have to watch my videos. You don't have to comment. You're free to do it, and I'll answer any question you want, okay? But these emails are riddled with assumptions. All you had to do was ask. But that's not what they want because that's not their goal. Their goal is to shut it down, and you're not going to shut me down. You're not going to stop me from telling my story. You're not going to stop these other people from getting relief. And getting some satisfaction. 
of knowing they're not alone. Because that's their group, that's the greatest tool is exposing you narcissists. And you narcissists may not like it, but you better learn to love it. Because that's just the way it is. I'm going to continue to hold the mirror to your narcissistic fucking faces and make you fucking stare into it until you fucking fuck off or change your ways. And don't worry, I'll make sure it's a nice tall mirror so you can see yourself on that fucking high horse you all sit on. To all my followers or anybody's watching this for help, do not let these people get into your head. Because they're going to try. And as angry as I am right now, I'm not angry for myself. I'm angry for everybody that has second-guessed themselves. People who I consider friends right now. And the narcissists continue to try to second-guess. And they continue to try to get in. Remember what I said they are. They're terminators. They will not stop until they maintain, until they get their objective goal. And that is to destroy you by getting their way. Hang in. And, you know, another message to you narcissists. You're not even original. You all use the same verbiage. You all use the same terminology. The same lines. Don't, have, don't air your dirty laundry. You use the same tactics. You try to divide and conquer. You always try to, they always try to get you alone. They never want to let anybody else hear what they're saying. Why is that? Because they know what they're saying is fucked. They know what they're saying is fucked. That's why they come to you like they're your friend and they're just trying to help you. They're not trying to help you. They're trying to get you to shut up and to put down that mirror because they can't stand to look at their own narcissistic faces. Well, everyone, I'd like to hear your comments. I know this one went on a little long. I think it needed to. Um, don't hesitate to, to friend request me on Facebook and, and chat me up uh, if you have any questions, if you have any... Uh, you just need to talk to somebody to talk to because I get it. And believe me, I have my manic issues. Okay, I have my moments. And I am far, far from perfect. But I cannot deal with these people who try to get in our heads and try to try to just crush every legitimate feeling we, we have. I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to stand for it. And you shouldn't either. So until next time, this is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching, and uh, everybody be well. Thanks again. Bye.